It is through its tropical jungle and colonial towns that Nicaragua must be explored, and through the local legends, songs and poetry, you will discover its friendly people and rich history. Its exceptional and protected natural environment is a true temple of biodiversity. This land of lakes and volcanoes shows its wild character. Don't hesitate to fully savour its spicy, colourful and fun-loving Caribbean small towns and its endless deserted beaches. For the past few years, the weapons of the revolution have no longer been heard, allowing Nicaragua to open its doors and reveal its treasures. The discovery of Nicaragua usually starts in Managua. The capital can be captivating or disappointing. At times, these contradictory feelings may even become one. With wide crisscrossing boulevards and a chaotic expansion, the city doesn't have the obvious charm of other Nicaraguan cities. The capital of Nicaragua genuinely summarizes the country's turbulent history. The main public monuments of Managua are in Republic Square, ancient site of the revolution. The main political gatherings of the last decades took place here. After a colonial past, dictatorship, revolution and liberalism, the capital as well as the country seem to still be searching for their course. Visitors to Managua usually don't stay long, yet its population of 1.5 million ardently defends their city. It may thus deserve a more in-depth detour. Traces of the revolution are found all over the capital, as the silhouette of Sandino recalls his mystic hold on the country. There are many parakeets in Managua. The city is surrounded by a thick jungle. Here, you must learn to deal with this wild universe. We leave Managua by road towards to Leon in the north. This ancient city was destroyed by an earthquake in 1610. Entirely rebuilt, today Leon is one of the most interesting cities of the country. Leon illustrates several layers of history from the colonials period inherent elegance to the bustling university city of today. The cathedral was built in several stages between 1746 and 1860. It houses baroque elements as well as a precious wooden statue of Christ arriving from Leon Viejo. Major restoration work was undertaken in 1992 with the help of the Spanish government. Ruben Dario, Nicaragua's famous poet, is buried here. The cathedral is claimed to be one of the largest in Central America. The five naves are the work of a Guatemalan architect. The cloister near the cathedral offers refreshing calmness. Founded in 1524, at the same time as Granada, Leon was among the candidates wishing to become the capital of Nicaragua. The Iglesia de la Recolección is one of the city's most remarkable sites. Built towards the end of the 18th century, the church's baroque facade has cable columns and amazing naif medallions with religious symbols. San Juan Market will easily attract aficionados. The constantly bubbling atmosphere spills into nearby streets, plunging the visitor in a lively and vibrant Nicaragua, full of music, sounds, bitter smells and warm colours. Here too, the parakeets are welcome guests, yet not always discreet. The Nicaraguans gladly take them in as pets. Here, one matches the colour of a t-shirt with those of your parakeet. Leon definitely cultivates its elegance. Nicaragua is bordered by two coasts. To the west of Leon lies the village of Penaloya on the Pacific coast. 
These calm beaches are invaded on the weekends when city dwellers seeking fresh air storm them, but during the week they can be peacefully enjoyed. On the Pacific coast, nature triumphs, overwhelms and doesn't seem to pay attention to the inhabitants, yet they live nearby, drawing their livelihood by fishing and living near the beaches. A few minutes from Penaloya lies the small fishing village of Las Pinitas, famous for its easy access to the mangroves of the natural reserve L'Isla Juan Fenado. This island is 22 kilometers long and only 250 meters wide. Here, one enters a wonderful aquatic world populated by wading and migratory birds. Impressive but totally harmless, the iguana belongs to the Pacific Coast landscape. The waters are full of fish. Used reasonably, this net fishing technique isn't expensive in terms of gasoline, nor does it deplete resources. Tomorrow, if all goes well, the local restaurants will be serving skate. To the east, on the other side of Leon, the northern volcano chain is located on the fire belt of the Pacific. In a region favorable to earthquakes and eruptions, Nicaragua has at least 40 volcanoes, nine of which are active. Anne Crozo, a volcano specialist, has lived in Nicaragua for 40 years. He has dedicated his life to studying volcanoes. There is no risk for the population. On the contrary, the ashes of the Cerro Negro have fertilized all the plains under the wind between the volcanic chain and the coast. The Cerro Negro erupts frequently. Its last eruption occurred in 1999. The volcano projected ashes up to 8,000 meters in altitude. On the road to the foot of the volcano, we meet families wearing their best clothes. It's Sunday and everybody's going to church. Catholicism is the major religion in Nicaragua, but the evangelical churches are imposing themselves as a new force to be reckoned with throughout the country. Under the impetus of evangelical pastors, places of worship are springing up, even in the most isolated rural areas. Sunday Mass also creates social links. Worshippers come from far away, including isolated farms. This little girl is on her way home on horseback. Horses are often used here for transportation. Heading back north, we drive through the city of Telica, but only make a short stop. This town has a very pretty church, but let's be honest, our main interest in this area is the presence of volcanoes. The Telica volcano is 1,061 meters high. It is very original as it has two craters. Climbing up there isn't that easy. The last major eruption took place in 1765, yet Talika remains a particularly active volcano. The Talika is the most active volcano of Nicaragua. With its 108 years of permanent activity and an eruption approximately every two years, but it isn't a threat to neighboring populations. The decor becomes unreal as we near the crater. The vapors contribute to this mysterious and disquieting atmosphere. Once at the top, we are in the mouth of the monster. The site is fascinating as we discover the 800 degrees Celsius incandescent lava lake. Telica is one of the 10 most beautiful volcanoes in the world. 
San Jacinto is the only town near the Ring of Fire. Built merely 50 years ago, it is located outside the dangerous perimeter in case the volcano should become threatening. As the ground here is too hot, nothing can grow. The population thus tries to live off the geothermal resources to produce electricity. In this rural landscape, schoolchildren wear uniforms. For many years, Nicaragua had the sad privilege of being the least educated state in Central America. At the end of the 70s, the situation began to change through the efforts of the Sandinista government. During the 80s, a massive alphabetization campaign increased threefold the number of students. As our journey continues, we discover a succession of lunar landscapes and witness amazing phenomena linked to the volcanic activity, such as the hervideros, small geysers of hot mud. As opposed to the lowlands, the climate in these mountain regions of Nicaragua is less suffocating. Temperatures can be quite high during the day, but drop significantly in the evening. Light floods and fresh air permeates this lovely region. It is covered with small family farms and the presence of water allows for rice paddy fields. Esteli is the main city of the Central Highlands. Caught in the middle of the conflict, this Sandinista bastion suffered a lot during the 70s. Traces left by the fighting are progressively disappearing, yet the sad results of the war is the number of widows and orphans here. Esteli produces some of the best tobacco in the world. Growing tobacco requires permanent attention. The growth of the plant is closely watched over. The farmer checks each plant approximately 150 times. Care is constant, each plant is individually watered. The harvest is also entirely done by hand, leaf by leaf. It starts at the beginning of March and ends in April. Esteli will certainly seduce cigar lovers. Nicaraguans will claim that their cigars are better than the Cuban ones. Today, Padron is one of the largest cigar factories. Making a cigar is a true art. You need the intuition of a cook and the dexterity of a magician, as the famous saying goes. Approximately 170 operations are needed before you can smoke a good fat cigar. The first step is to select the leaves after the harvest and dry them according to their size and quality. The way a cigar is made also determines its quality. In the factory, torcedores roll the cigars by hand in a room called Galera. At the beginning of the 19th century, prisons were the factories. This explains the custom of seating the torcedores in long rows like galley slaves. A cigar goes from hand to hand. Each person has a distinct role. This scene gives the impression of a perfectly orchestrated play. Today we have 350 employees in the factory and the fields. Depending on the period of the year, it's in fact seasonal work. When there is more work, we employ 400 people. The last stage consists in ringing and wrapping the cigar.
Esteli is a farming area where the horse is still often used for transportation. Senor Arantz is what we call here a talabaltejo, meaning a saddle maker. In his family, generations have worked leather to make all the equipment required to ride a horse. The family workshop is in town. Today, his son runs the shop. His father can enjoy semi-retirement after having taught him all the tricks of the trade. The saddles are entirely done by hand and custom made to suit the horse as well as the rider. We make saddles for people who work in the fields as well as for the vaqueros, cowboys who watch over the cattle. We also have clients throughout the country as well as in neighboring states. Further north, towards Honduras, lies the region of Nueva Segovia. The forests are very large in these humid mountain zones. Many tree species are exploited in Nicaragua. They furnish various products such as wood, but also resin, gum, balsam, oil, spices and leaf fibres. Exploring the forest is an opportunity to admire the amazing lushness of trees, plants and flowers. At the heart of these forests, coffee plantations abound. In this environment, the bushes find the shade required for their growth. Coffee production is often linked to huge estates. Actually, 80% of the plantations are small family farms, roughly 5 hectares large or 12 acres. This traditional crop does not require pesticides and respects the environment. Our farm obtained the Fair Trade Certification. It is very important for us, particularly in terms of protecting the families, especially the women and children who work. It's a major social progress and it's also a good thing as far as education is concerned. La responsabilidad social es buena protección ambiental, que los hijos se eduquen. After the harvest, the pulp of the coffee cherries must be quickly taken off to prevent any bitterness during the dry or wet processing. Here, the wet technique is used, but it can only be applied to very ripe fruit. After having cut open the cherry's envelope, they are soaked in water long enough to ferment and thus guarantee the degradation of the pulp. You obtained washed coffee beans that are less acidy and have a longer lasting taste in the mouth. Nicaragua produces the best coffee vintages of Central America. The beads must then be sorted out to eliminate any rotten ones. This operation is also done by hand. Once dried, the coffee is ready to be roasted. Ocotal is the capital of Nueva Segovia province. Due to the activity in terms of wood, coffee and other crops, there is practically no unemployment here. Many farms operate within the framework of fair trade cooperatives that include various agricultural activities, but also arts and crafts. Today, Ocotal is a lively city with activities in agriculture and trade. It also is a historical site of the revolutionary struggle. Many Nicaraguans died in the mountains around the city during the war led by Sandino against American interferences. The rebels won their first victory here in 1927. This is a fair trade cooperative that regroups seven plantations. This type of system is becoming increasingly successful as it allows the producers to be more fairly paid. After it was roasted, the coffee is wrapped in different ways. The trend is to try to distinguish the various vintages and create the recognition of local quality. Here you can taste different types of coffee according to the plant variety and climatic conditions, as well as exposure, altitude and drying technique. Nicaraguans usually pour hot water directly on ground coffee and let it set.
The hammock holds a special place in the imagination of Central Americans, who has never dreamt of a nice nap in the shade when it's hot, rocked by a slight swaying of the soft air. In Nicaragua, hammock also rhymes with work. To obtain a comfortable, sturdy and, of course, very pretty hammock, its production requires true know-how. The colours remind us of the spectacular feathers of the macaws. Nature is a true source of inspiration for the arts and crafts. Back to central Nicaragua, the city of Masaya has a particular meaning for the Nicaraguans. History is engraved in the streets, on the buildings and even on the population's face. Actually, the city belongs to a region that refused for a long time to accept Spanish domination. Today, Masaya is a famous arts and crafts center. The folk traditions are deeply anchored in the spirit of the locals. It's one of the only places in the Pacific region of Nicaragua where the people proudly exhibit their native roots. The Apotia Laguna is located between Masaya and Granada. It is the largest crater lake of Nicaragua. From the Catarina Mirador, the view is breathtaking. The blue waters are exceptionally attractive, especially when it is hot. We take a bus to reach Granada. This city is a true jewel. This restored colonial town that is small enough to be visited on foot has a rich history and undeniable charm. The locals, who are conservatives by tradition, actually have the reputation of being snobs in the rest of Nicaragua. The elegant blue facade of the Iglesia de San Francisco invites us to enter through the porch to admire the frescoes. The ancient convent, built in 1529, was used as military quarters. Today, it's a museum. Built around a large courtyard with palm trees, the highlight of the visit is in the Sala Saparia. It holds 27 pre-Columbian statues sculpted by the Chorotegas between the 9th and 13th centuries. Their size suggests they may have supported the roof of an edifice. Halfway between the centre and the lake, the Guadalupe Church is quite deteriorated. It was the silent witness of many battles that marked the history of Granada, especially after the arrival of the pirates and filibusters. During the 16th century, Bartolome de las Casas, a respected defender of Latin America's indigenous peoples, hid in the San Francisco convent. Outraged by the horrible treatment endured by the Indians, this Dominican priest started a long correspondence with the King of Spain. Reading these letters denouncing the atrocities committed on the indigenous peoples led to a more humane treatment of the natives. The present bishop of the Chiapas, a devoted protector of indigenous people, considers de las Casas to have been a pioneer. The cathedral has simple vaults that create an austere atmosphere around the striking representation of the Virgin Mary. During a stroll, discover very well preserved and restored solid homes. You'll have the feeling of living in a colonial past. After having toured the city, we head for the banks of Cosibolda, the famous Lake Nicaragua. Just before sunrise, a large variety of bird species appear. Herons, egrets, jacanas, and other migrants. No visit to Granada would be complete without an excursion to the Islatas, a tiny archipelago of 360 emerald green islets shaped after an eruption of the Mombasho volcano. It requires a certain experience not to get lost among the natural canals that surround the islets. The locals know the slightest alcove and exactly where to throw their nets. 
Here you can meet very nice residents, atelas, also called spider monkeys because of their very long arms. They feed on the delicious fruit that abounds here. Some of these luxuriant islands are only a few metres in diameter, whereas others take pride in their luxury homes and recent hotels. Although they seem deserted, they have a population of 2,000 dwellers. The place is ideal to dream of a tropical paradise. We regret having to leave Granada and pursue our trip between banana plantations. Nicaragua is a country to be discovered through its music. It holds an important place in the life of its people. On all street corners, in all towns or villages, you can hear the sound of a salsa or popular music. Nicaraguans, who call themselves Nicas, are a people marked by an exceptional blend of solemnity and exuberance, joy and sadness. Nicaragua is essentially a farming country. Sugar cane production is very important, with numerous plantations throughout the country. After the sugar cane is harvested, it is put through a grinder to collect the cane juice. The cane scraps will be used to heat the container in which the juice is boiled. Many little workshops such as this one still exist. Most of the process is still done by hand with ancient equipment. Nicaragua is one of the poorest countries of Latin America. Small farm owners can't afford modern machines, yet it doesn't prevent them from obtaining excellent products found on markets abroad through the fair trade cooperatives. For a very long time, the country was in the hands of wealthy families. On their huge properties or fincas, they employed workers for a miserable salary. Redistribution of the land allowed the creation of small farms such as this one. To succeed, we must look after the machines to extract the sweet cane juice. It has to be done carefully and be well mixed to obtain the most sugar. Nicaragua's society has adopted the Latin American traditional values. Hard labor is one of them. The juice is then transferred into wooden vats. It is regularly stirred prior to being poured into molds. Once cooled off, these sugar loaves are ready to be eaten and sold. The sea resort of San Juan del Sur is a perfect place to rest. The purpose of all services and facilities is relaxation and pleasant water activities. The city opens onto a large bay surrounded by hills and rocks. The seaside is a great place to enjoy local fish specialities.
During the sunset, the bay takes on the airs of an El Dorado, perhaps a sign that tourism is booming. The natural reserve of Visa Silvestre Punta La Flor is near the bay. It isn't easy to reach this protected and charming site. It is worth the detour to discover these empty beaches. You are sure to spend a most relaxing afternoon, far from the growing noise of the resort. Wildlife has amazing surprises in store for the visitor who is a good observer. The coral reefs are alive even on the beaches, a rare phenomenon these days. With its sea anemones, urchins, small shellfish, this coast is still protected. These beaches are also famous for the sea turtles that lay their eggs here. We are on the isthmus between the Pacific and Lake Nicaragua. The country is reduced to a small strip of land 200 meters wide. It's the spiritual and historical heart of Nicaragua. The island of Ometipi in the middle of the lake is accessible by ferry. Here 35,000 people live off the production of bananas, coffee, sugarcane and a little tourism. If you are not in a hurry, the bus can be a pleasant solution to travel throughout Nicaragua. It's a good way to meet the warm Nicaraguans who are genuinely curious to know why you are visiting their beloved country. A simple smile and a buenos dias will open the doors of hospitality. <laughs> By going up along Lake Nicaragua to Nondane in the north, this church is worth a few minutes' stop. From the outside, it's in classic Spanish style, but once inside, the roof structure of the nave symbolizes the several hundred years old trees of Nicaragua. Located a little further down the road towards Granada, San Juan de Oriente is really worth a detour. In this charming village with a population of 3,000, 80% of the adults are busy producing craft works. The nickname of the city is San Juan de los Platos and refers to the ceramics made here. This activity traditionally belonged to the women. With the increase in tourism and the opening of a teaching workshop in 1978, the men joined their ranks. According to a legend, the artisans of the village are descendants of a group of native artisans that moved here several centuries ago. In general, the entire family is involved in the production. Decorations are in the nave style, using themes of the peasant life of Nicaragua. Flowers and tropical animals also are sources of inspiration. Most of the artisans have set up their workshop in their homes where one room is used as a shop. Further north, the impressive Masaya volcano dominates the landscape. With five craters, its shield shape is quite uncommon. The volcano has been periodically active since the arrival of the Spaniards in 1524. At that time, the crater contained a lava lake. The conquistadors suspected the presence of large reserves of melted gold in the region. In reality, Masaya is one of the largest degassing volcanoes in the world. As for the gold, the conquistadors only found a few unpleasant odors.
On the banks of Lake Nicaragua, this small ferry is very useful to reach San Carlo and avoid 120 kilometers of roads. Perfectly ecological, it operates by the strength of your arms. Everybody is asked to contribute to this collective effort. On the other side in Juigalpa, fruit sellers will allow you to regain some strength. The Archaeology Museum is a must. It has Nicaragua's most important collection of stel, as well as roughly 100 anthropomorphic funerary statues. Sculpted in basalt between the 9th and 15th century, some are up to 5 metres high. The town of Juigalpa has preserved its Spanish colonial style. It is a friendly place with a very hospitable population. As there are very few tourists, you will have the feeling of enjoying this place alone. For at least 5,000 years, the locals have grown corn and made the famous tortillas served with most dishes, especially meat. Many farms fringe the outskirts of the town. The endless green fields are perfect to breed cattle. Vaqueros on horseback watch over herds of a few hundred heads. The region produces 90% of Nicaragua's need for beef. <laughs> Regardless of weather conditions, watching over the cattle is mainly done on horseback. The vaqueros thus cover thousands of kilometers on their horses to contain their herds. The dexterity of the vaqueros, who handle the lasso better than anyone, also contributes to create this legendary image in all of Central America. Heading south of Lake Nicaragua, we leave the world of vaqueros for that of fishermen. San Carlos is a seaport. From here, you can explore the Saltentiman Islands and one of the most fantastic natural reserves of the country. The city itself is of little interest. Let us waste no time and head for this dream of a preserved natural environment. Tell me, Archipelago, tell me what happened. Tell me if the natural beauty of these islands whose splendor I saw has already died. This poem, in the interrogative form, is concerned about the revolution's eventual damage to this exceptional site. No need to worry, today the Solentiman Islands have remained a string of exquisite green pearls delicately set on the soft inland sea. Inspired by the efforts of neighboring Costa Rica in terms of protection of the environment, Nicaragua has undertaken for the past 12 years the preservation of its natural wealth and the development of ecotourism. With approximately 400 bird species, this reserve is a transit zone between the dry tropical forest and the rainforest. Among the many birds, you can admire the rosate spoonbill with its special coat and beak. These 
These reserves should normally awaken the naturalist that sleeps in all of us. There are numerous lizard species. Iguanas are often seen soaking up the sun without hiding. The capucine, howler or spider monkeys also abound. The sea turtles are fascinating, especially when they come on land together by the hundreds. The surprise is complete. That was an alligator. It is strongly advised to hire a guide to know what or who you are dealing with. To stay in this jungle, where man is barely tolerated, you must be well equipped. Mosquitoes quickly remind intruders that they aren't welcome. At times, the encounters are pleasant, such as with this native frog that measures only two centimetres. Here, it is called the red frog with blue legs. After this impressive bestiary, it is time not to disappoint plant lovers. According to recent studies, Nicaragua has more than 12,000 recognised plant species. But certain scientists claim that in the long term, research could allow to identify 80,000 species. Nicaragua is Noah's Ark. The Solentinam archipelago also has a community of artists. This species is not endangered. Towards the beginning of the 70s, Ernesto Cardinal, a famous priest and revolutionary poet, future Sandinista Minister of Culture, founded a community for farmers and artists. This controversial community was banned. The artistic tradition went on and naive painting in the cardinal style became more and more popular. This naive art translates several ideals. A world of innocence, an ideal vision of nature, a belief in a better world. The art tradition obviously isn't a novelty on the island. These petroglyphs are said to be more than 2,000 years old. We are changing direction and flying towards the Atlantic. Our destination is Bluefields. The Caribbean coast has been part of Nicaragua for almost a century. The atmosphere is so distinct that you have the feeling of being in another country. Everything is different, the landscape is flatter, the roads suddenly disappear, the towns are rarer and the vegetation is changing. The people are marked by their Caribbean identity. They have preserved their languages and their social structures. Today, Bluefields is like a full-scale theatre, livened up through several cultures and languages, its special schools, high schools and economic activities. All these elements reflect the dynamism of this bilingual or even trilingual city where you can hear English, Spanish and or Creole in the same sentence. Bluefield isn't a city with character, but it is pleasant to stroll in its streets, contemplate the passing of time on its buildings and observe life. Music and dance play a very important role in the local life. In May, on the weekends, the Maypole Festival is in full swing, with dance and drum competitions between the various districts. Preparations turn out to be just as interesting as the celebrations themselves. The Bluefields Caribbean Star Band is rehearsing.
this dance, the punta is in fact a ritual for Maeya, the goddess of fertility and the first rains. We leave the coast towards the islands at large, the pride of Nicaragua. The life of travellers to the Corn Islands is limited to basics, eating, dancing, sleeping and walking on the beach. This is like a second vacation, so to speak. The dream of staying on a small island of the Caribbean with white sand beaches, palm trees and clear water has come true. The largest island has a population of 9,000. The number is clearly increasing since 10 years ago, only 2,000 islanders lived here. The mirage of tourism has had its effect on a very warm Spanish-speaking population. Fishing, especially lobster, remains a major activity. There isn't much to do here, which is fine as the place turns out to be lovely. Big Corn Island takes on the look of a prosperous and developed large city compared to Little Corn, located 11 kilometers to the northwest. The beaches and paths in the jungles are the main sights. No cars nor noise spoil the calmness of this big rock covered with a beautiful tropical forest to be explored on foot or on bicycle. You will only share the island with a thousand islanders. The sportier visitors will no doubt want to fish, swim or scuba dive. The lazier ones will let themselves deliciously slide on the sand. And everybody will enjoy the delicious fish. Cut off from the beaches and the sun, time has come to explore these islands to assess this world. <laughs> it's impossible to get lost on Corn Island. If you tour the island, two roads and several trails will always bring you back to your starting point. But don't hesitate to go off the beaten tracks. Walking is the best way to meet these islands' most precious attraction, so to speak, its inhabitants. Dancing is a genuine social cementing, to the tune of a salsa or biguine. Smiles illuminate the faces. Strange Nicaragua, 
From Manugua to the Corn Islands, this country led us from one ocean to the other. We will not forget the green valleys, the fury of the volcanoes, the numerous contrast of this country, and especially the smiles and the warmth of the Nicaraguans. We also better understand their turbulent history, but on these islands, all seems to have calmed down. In this world itself, at the end of the world, we are simply connected to the essential. Facing this huge sky, the images of a fascinating trip come back to us.